Eastern Standard Time. It's Saturday morning, and you know what that means. It's time for Saturday morning cereals. As always, I'm the captain, bringing you the best in Saturday morning cartoons. I say Saturday morning cartoons, but I'll still slip a weekday cartoon in there. It doesn't matter. You know, it's funny because I say that, but. Uh, IDW is releasing G.I. Joe and now they're doing Turtles Saturday morning specials and here in the States I know I've talked to some of you out there that are that are overseas whose Saturday morning cartoons consisted of Thundercats, G.I. Joe, He-Man, whatnot um, but they're bringing you Turtles and G.I. Joe and it's in the classic art style so I think those are pretty fun no, I really like the G.I. Joe one. I haven't seen the Turtles one yet, so but that's coming out. Uh, it's in my new order book, so I'll be ordering that soon. Okay, as always, Saturday Morning Serials is brought to you by RU Game, the best comic book collectible magic toy uh, media store located at 124 North Sunset Drive, Pickle, Ohio, 45356. And some of you guys are asking, how can you find me? You can find Are You Game on Facebook. You can contact me, your captain, uh, on Facebook under Paul Lee. You can find me under Group Therapy TV at Captain Cartoon on Twitter. And you can find me at Group Therapy on Instagram. So, I really, really played with this week's episode. I had some new ones last week. Some of the stuff I didn't think there would be any way that they'd let me get past, but they did. So, we're going to keep bringing you more. Uh, and I will warn you, some of the quality of some of the stuff is, is not the best, but you are taking it from old VHS tapes recorded from television. Some of the stuff has never seen DVD, and I don't know if it ever will. So, here we go, guys. I brought you it last week. I'm bringing it again this week. It's Ultra Force. And I liked Ultra Force. Uh, some people were, were complaining, like, oh, you know, the characters are. Man, I'm sorry. Malibu has some really good stuff with, with the. I think the Ultra Force was pretty good. Um, Malibu, some of their other stuff wasn't the greatest, like Man of War, the Ferret, stuff like that. But I really liked Alter Force, man. I liked Prime. I liked Hard Case. I liked Prototype. I liked Alter Force. Um, I wish Marvel would do something with some of these characters, which we had the crossover stuff. We had the Alter Force uh, versus X Men. Um, you know, you had you had a lot of crossover stuff, and then they just sort of just let it go once Marvel bought Malibu. But this thing is bad. They just they should do something with it. So. Here you guys go. This is Ultra Force Episode 2 Stuff of Heroes. Enjoy. Ultra Previously on Ultra Force. Who's got enough power to suck two ton missiles right into the ground? And where are they gonna strike next? Enough! It is the missiles I want. Ah! You have.
have taken light and air for granted for the last time. You want to put an Ultra Team together, right? An Ultra Force. I shall annihilate them using their own weapons of destruction. This is not what we agreed upon, Atalon. Not this avalanche of death. Do not rile me, Gazma. I only do unto the surface people what they did to us. He's gonna move the whole planet. Then why are you standing there? Prime, you're... you're okay. Sure I'm okay. Let's do this! Hold it! Those are armed nuclear warheads. We can't just punch them out of the sky. Maybe you can't. Prime can! <laughs> Contrary, we need your help. Prime's on the loose. We've got to stop him. Gladly. <laughs> uh, what right have you to... Status picks. I'm in a back door around the access code. Getting the launch code from the onboard computer. All right, I got the recall code. One down, fourteen to go. She's doing this one by one. There's no time for this. The warheads are programmed to detonate at 10,000 feet. At the rate you're going... All right, aced it. I should be able to recall all but three. We've got to intercept those last three before they drop below 10,000 feet. What are the targets of the last three missiles? Singapore, Berlin, Anchorage, Alaska. Prime takes Anchorage. Wait, use it. Ah! Hatch. How does he expect to disarm it? He doesn't have a comm link. Someone will have to catch up with him. That better be you, Hardcase. You're the only one who can reason with him. Proto, you take Berlin. Pix will guide you to the intercept point. What about Singapore? Pix and I will take care of it. You girls? <laughs> worry about Berlin, Prototype. I'll worry about Singapore. Hardcase, wait. This will help you catch up with Prime. Good luck. Thanks. I'll need it. So, kid, where is this thing? North, northeast, and don't call me kid. <laughs> I'll call you kid till you prove otherwise. Spotted. So, how do I defuse this thing? Be careful, Pix. Just don't lose me, okay? Look for a hatch just to the rear of the nose cone. Awesome wirework. Can I just trash this without blowing it up? No! There's an explosive detonator and three fail-safe devices to worry about. I need a few seconds! We don't have a few seconds! Pull the yellow connector out of the black box at the top and reverse the leads on the red module on the fifth board. No offense, kid, but you can't even fix your hair right. You sure about this? I'll expect some major groveling at my feet for that crack about the hair. You got it, kid. Uh, you settle for whiz, kid? It'll do for now. Okay, one missile left. Hard case, you've got less than a minute. Talk to me. I don't see Prime or the missile. It's dead ahead, Hard case, and dropping fast. Eleven thousand feet, ten thousand five hundred. Big guy. He's a cake. I've only got a hundred feet before it detonates. Fifty, twenty-five, ten, five. Get out of there! Move it, Prime. It's too late. Nobody tells Prime it's. 
too late? Right. No! What's going on? Nothing good. But here. Too thin. You're one dumb as dirt, showboating hotshot, aren't you? Not for one second did you think of the danger you put everybody in, did you? Hold on! Prime just saved five billion people! Not too sharp on numbers, either. Listen good, Prime. There was a safe, less exciting way to take care of that bomb. And then there was your way. Your kind. I don't want anything to do with it. Understand? But what about Adelon? I thought we were a team. Team with you? Right. On a cold day in the Sahara. Fine. You don't want Prime? Well, Prime don't want you. And believe me, you need me! Good work, hard case. Where's Prime? I don't believe this. The world's falling apart. And what's this guy thinking? He's a... Uh... A total nimbus with the IQ of room temperature? I, Atalon, King of the Fire People, declare the surface world as my own. You have thwarted my first attack. The second will not be so fortuitous. We need every Ultra we can muster. Prime is the strongest. <sighs> All right. I'll talk to him. No offense, Ghoul, but it's getting kind of ripe in here. You mind? It is not death, but die, which is terrible. Henry Fielding, 1751. What is this, Hamlet? I get these premonitions. You need to get out of here, now! <laughs> you are monumentally weird. Now get going, I got work to do. Come on, ghoul. Hard case talking to Prime, should be a good show. Something coming in. Some type of projectile! Atalon? I don't know! It's from space! Velocity? Unbelievable! Estimated impact! Picks! It's no missile. Look. Ugh. Where am I? What strange army is this? Stand there chanting nonsense rhymes. Uh, you, lady, off the field now. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Look, the big beefcake knows how to write his name. How about a facelift, courtesy of Prime? Put him down, Prime. He's a kid. You look foolish. Yeah? Well, at least Prime doesn't look like a sandwich somebody left in their locker for six months. Look, I still don't like your hot shot attitude. But the fact is, we need all the help we can get against Adelon. You bet you need Prime. I'm the strongest, toughest Ultra of them all. Got the biggest mouth, too. <laughs> Foolish humans. They do not deserve the surface world. The people are talking, Atalon. They fear you will bring ruin and destruction upon us. You will anger the ancient kings. And if the ancient kings were to side with me, would my people then be happy? I knew the decayed one would be of use. Enemy! 
I again need your services. A distraction. Will be. Prime! No! Whoa! Whoa! Stop it! Both of you! Adelon is the problem here. Enemy! You're back for the last time! Prime! He needs your help! Now! Guys! I just got out of the ground! I'm not quite ready to go back again! Go after Ghoul, Frodo. I'm on it. Put him down, enemy! Your fight is with me! Prime don't need your help! Prime fights his own battles! No! You can't do this! Not like the squad! Not again! Everyone get back! Get back! Hard case, no! Don't try to save me! You were right! Prime's got a lot more to learn about being a hero! Me. Come and get me! the squad. Come on! Finish the job. I gotta do something! Prime's almost completely gone! Wait! My cape! Gotta keep control! Use my primal force! Keep my cape from dissolving! Hold it! Anymore! Wow! I didn't know the goo could do that! said about you, man. Prime? You're a kid. You've changed into a kid. Don't laugh, okay? Just don't laugh. No one is supposed to know. Laugh? No. Now it all finally makes sense. You're just a kid trying to live up to being in a man's body. But not just any man, or any ultra for that matter, but the strongest ultra in the world. <laughs> Unbelievable. I said don't laugh! 
No one's supposed to know. Look, you saved my life. In my book, you're a hero. Wow. Thanks. That means a lot coming from you. You won't tell anybody, will you? Your secret is safe with me, kid. I promise. But listen. If we're gonna be a team, you gotta cut that hotshot stuff. Think before you act. Cause we need you. You mean it? For real? For real. We're gonna need Prime back right away. Uh, well, I don't know. I can't just change on command, but I'll try. Could you, uh... Gotcha. If I... Concentrate hard enough. All right, it's prime time. Picks, don't open fire. It's hard case. I've got prime with me. A kinder. Gentle pride. This I gotta see. We got a surprise for you, too. On your guard, sisters! Men have invaded the ship! Her name's Topaz. We recruited her from a football game. Ah! Uh, not again! This ship's turning into a piece of Swiss cheese! Yeah! Prime, go right! I'll go left! Nobody tells Prime what to... I mean... Sorry. Good plan. Topaz, stop. They're on our side. But they're men! Do you mean to say you actually fight alongside these? Who is this person? Topaz is the Queen of Gwendor. Thank you. The Queen of Gwendor can speak for herself. I have somehow fallen into your world. I have made a bond with Sister Contrary to help her. In return, she will help me find a way home. That is all you need to know. Wrong. I need to know anything that will... Lighten up, Hardcase. She gave her word. Just like I gave to you. I know I've been difficult. Let's face it, I've been an obnoxious, loudmouth jerk. I like him already. Proto, what happened? Where's Ghoul? He was sinking fast, but I caught up with him finally, and I had a real good grip on him. And then? Well, how was I supposed to know the guy'd fall apart like that? Whoever this Adelon is, he's got Ghoul, but what could he possibly want with him? You took me as a hostage. <laughs> come here, come here. Hate to break it to you, but I wasn't worth much in trading value even with both my arms and legs. Whoa. I have a much better use for you, rancid one. What possible use could you have for a dead guy? It seems my people need convincing that I, Atalon, am doing the right thing, reclaiming the surface world. They have grown cowardly so long in the dark. Scared of the light. That's a twist. You read the minds of the dead. Actually, I prefer comic books. You will speak to our ancient kings. They will pronounce me the Fire People's one and only savior. Then, no one shall dare stand against me. And if I say no? You will discover that there are worse things than being dead. dead, dead.
yours? No, I'm... Your mother s- said she found it in your closet. I don't know. One of the guys was... Must have what? Look, Dad, it's Where not... did you get it? Dad, Answer it's... me. Who taught you how to do this stuff? You, all right? I learned it by watching you. Parents who use drugs have children who use drugs. First in stereo, this is WKPT-TV. Grandpa, tell me the sun-kissed story again. Ah, the magical land of the sun-kissed factory. oranges ever wear the sun kiss name all right hope you guys are still liking ultra force good i am yeah um here's the thing i always ask you week after week you know what was your favorite you know chuck e cheese showbiz pizza that's why i found out there was cowabunga pizza that's where i found out there was you know, a lot of neighborhood style pizza places like that that I did not know existed. Now I do. I ask you, if you ate Pop-Tarts, what was your favorite Pop-Tarts? So, big right now, I know you probably, a lot of you probably watched Stranger Things. Not gonna lie, I did. I burnt through it very quickly. Uh, me, and, me and Tina went over here and watched it like that. And she did very good because she doesn't usually do well in long TV shows and long movies. Made it through the last episode. Two and a half hours. She made, she was able to make it. So, you know, we got the 80s music going on. I'm a synthwave guy. Love my heavy metal. Stuff like that. One. What was your favorite band as a kid? Or what was your favorite band, you know, maybe not as a kid, kid, but, you know, what was one of your favorite bands? And do you still listen to them to this day? What was your favorite band, Duran Duran? Do you still listen to Duran Duran? Hey, I do. One of my favorite bands, I mean, it's bad. Uh, My favorite bands were were a little bit later, you know. I still liked, I liked Kiss when I was a little kid. Kind of grew out of Kiss. I still listen to them from eh, here and there. Uh, once I got really into metal in the in the in the mid '80s, uh, that stuck. So I still listen to that stuff to this day. Still listen to it in my car on the way here. So, all right. So tell me, what music do you listen to, and do you still listen to it today? That's what I want to do. What was your, what was your favorite band? What was your favorite band or music? And do you still listen to it to this day? Let me know. All right. So I found Super 7. And I like Super 7 because they're blocks. Um, you know, we did uh, the first three episode block last week. Um, this next one is uh, Manta and Moray. I'd love to do, you know, the whole block all at once, but that would be long because it's actually five instead of three like the first one. So this is Super 7, and this is Manta and Moray, and this is Waters of Doom and the Whale Killers. Enjoy. <laughs>
platoon's name? Everything here has been chewed up. I have a bad feeling about this, Moray. if it meant any harm, Moray. Whatever it was, it seemed as scared of us as we were of it. What scares me most is the damage it's causing to the sea life around here. We'd better follow it. Stuff is deadly. Let's see how far it extends. This is starting to make sense. I'd better pay a visit to the mayor here on the double. I wish I was a land walker like you so I could go too. Just wish me luck. Yeah, I'm afraid you're gonna need it. Uh, that'll be five clams. Here, keep the change. Why do I get all the kooks? I'm sorry, Moray, but our fair city has been pouring its waste into the ocean for years now. To stop that, we would have to build purification facilities costing millions of dollars. I assure you, Mr. Mayor, the cost to the world will be much greater than that if the seas die. All your chemicals and pollutants have created a mutation out there, a kelp-eating monster. And once the kelp is gone, every other living thing in the ocean will follow. Moray, you're asking me to spend millions on the basis of a wild fish story? I'm afraid the answer is no. Then I'll bring you proof that you're wrong. What kind of proof? Mr. Mayor, I'm going to bring you a real live sea monster. Well, Whiskers, according to the tide, it's nearly two o'clock. I hope Moray's having... Moray, so how did it go? Don't ask. Oh, I was afraid of that. Now what do we do? We try to make friends with that sea creature and bring him back here. Maybe when the people of this city get a first-hand look at what they've created, they'll realize they have to stop polluting. It's a good idea. I only hope our sea monster likes it. We'll soon find out. I'm nervous enough. I don't need any critics. We are your friends. Trust us. We won't harm. 
harm you. Moray? Moray! Quick, Whiskers! Help me get her to the surface! Oh, that was quite a knock. You okay? Sure. You ought to know by now that I have a hard head. Where did the creature go? As far away from us as he could get. Let's see if we can pick up his trail. Mr. Mayor, there's trouble at the harbor. It's incredible. Calm down, Simpson. Now, what are you talking about? A sea monster is trapped in the harbor and can't get out. A sea monster? Holy cow, we're gonna need a whole army. You'd better get him here fast. That ship's full of gasoline. One spark and this whole harbor's gonna blow sky high. Can't miss the big guy's trail. Looks like he's headed toward the city. Tune again. Whiskers, bring me some kelp. It's Manti Moray. What are they doing? We're trying to stop you all from making a tragic mistake. Leave this animal alone. He's only frightened. He won't cause you any more trouble. Good work, Whiskers. Here you are. Come on. We'll lead you out of this harbor to deep water. It's no use, Moray. I admit you are right about our pollution. But this creature is much too dangerous to let it escape. Now move aside. I think we're going to need reinforcements. <laughs> Believe it! There's your path out of the harbor, Great One. So what do you say? Are we friends? I understand. And I'm sorry. But you aren't alone. You have all of us for friends. <laughs> What's that all about? The creature said that it feels weak. It knows its life will soon be over, but it will die knowing that others cared for it. Maury, I apologize for not having more faith in you. Mr. Mayor, your apology is accepted. Simpson, arrange an emergency meeting of the city council. We have to put a stop to this pollution immediately. I think today we used up the last of our... You are safe now, little Whiskers. Calm down. Now what's wrong, Whiskers? 
Show us the way, little friend. Remove it carefully. Is it a dud? There's one way to find out. How's your harpooning arm? Great, as long as the target isn't a whale. Okay, get ready. will be all right now. She just needs rest. We have to find those ships. Guppy, where are the whale ships? <laughs> rest here, Guppy. We'll stop them. She wants to come, Manta. I can see that. Very well, then. We shall all go. Put ahead. I don't want to lose this pack. I think, gentlemen, that with this pack we will more than make up for the one that got away this morning. Manta, they're closing on that pack of greys. Guppy, dive. Ram the ships. What's going on? Captain, look, get ahead. Who are you? I am Manta, and this is Moray. Who's in charge of these ships? I am. What is it you want? You must stop slaughtering the whales. Captain, the whales you hunt are greys. They are protected by international law. There is no law out here, my friends. Now, out of my way. We have our work to do. But, Captain, if we continue to kill everything around us, there won't be anything left for the future. And all of mankind will suffer as a result. I am a man of the sea, and hunting whales is what I do. Then as a man of the sea, Captain, you must understand that the oceans and their creatures must live so that we may live. We'll not move until you turn these ships around. Oh, very well. Come aboard and we will talk. Morey, look out! I'm sorry, but I do this for your own safety. Raise her. You win this one, Captain. Stay, Whiskers. Help Moray. Guppy and I will hide the whales. Go now. Come, Guppy. We have work to do. Lock her in the aft cabin. <laughs> Whiskers, you couldn't have dropped in at a better time. Any sign of them? No, sir. It's like they just vanished into thin air. 
I think that sea man has something to do with those whales disappearing. Maybe the girl can tell us where they are. Come on, Whiskers. You can do it. Go for it. That a boy. I am hurrying, Whiskers. Someone's coming. Let's go. She's gone. has taken the whales. to that iron. Ten miles, Captain. But it is surrounded by reefs and in these seas. I know what I'm doing, Mr. Kiobe. Just set a course for that iron. Yes, sir. Moray should have been here by now. You're all right? Yes, thanks to Whiskers. He rescued me just in time. Right, Whiskers? What of the whaling ships? We lost them. The whales will be safe here. The sea grows angry. Those ships will have trouble. Captain, the charts indicate we are less than 50 yards from the reef. Don't you think? We're going to find those whales, and I don't care how close we have to come to those reefs. Yes, sir, but the wind... Manta, the whaling ships are on the reef. Come on. The waves are too big to rush the lifeboats. I know, I know. Give me time to think. Captain, can you hear me? What do you want? Give us some strong rope, and we'll pull you off the reef. Pull us off? But that's impossible. Not if you have the right friends. and Moray, and to your whale friends for saving us. They're your friends too, Captain, as long as you don't hunt them. Farewell, my friends. I hope we meet again. <laughs> what did she say? I think she wants to know if you need a push. <laughs> <laughs>
Hello, Huey boy. My motto's tried and true. Read a book today, I bet you'll say okay. <laughs> I'll be <read> more true. <laughs> Now, these messages. Hear anything negative? Sunkiss searches and searches for fun fruit trees. The only trees funny enough I found them. to grow Sunkiss fun fruits. Every chewy one is real fruity fun. And now we've discovered new Sunkiss fun fruits cream supremes. They're covered with yogurt and filled with fun. New Sunkissed Fun Fruits, Cream Supremes. It's coming. Dig em. And it tastes so sweet. You'll hop when you eat. Kellogg's Honey Smack. Tastes so sweet. I dig em. You'll hop when you eat. Dig em. Make it jump for joy at the Grumman Boy. Kellogg's Honey Smack. A honey sweet part of this nutritious breakfast. Dig em. What are those kids up to? Tastes so sweet. You'll hop when you eat. Dig em. Actually, I should have said that. There's actually big, good, good sized blocks. Um, and they're always, the Super 7 are kind of knockoffs of the Justice League. Or Justice League type characters. Which has those superpowers. So, I'm going to bring them to you. And probably blocks here and there. So, I'll probably do, I did, uh, uh, yeah, Super Stretch and Micro Woman last week. I did uh, Moray and, and uh, Manta and Moray this week. Maybe I'll bring something else next week. Or maybe I'll do more Manta and Moray. Don't know. I'll have to think about it. But I do apologize on the quality of this because this is old. This is taken from VHS tape. So it is not the best quality. But I can't remember who asked for it. But I'm bringing it back this week. Mutant League. Um, I know I realized I hadn't shown Mutant League in quite a while when people were asking for it again. And I apologize. Did not pay attention. I have not aired it in so long. So we're going to bring in you Mutant League Episode 8. And uh, I'm not going to lie. I cannot believe what they get away with the music they get away with on their show. So hope you guys enjoy. Have fun. Mutant League. Today on Mutant League. Kang signs the monsters to a lucrative endorsement contract, but fame has a price. Bones, Justice, and his team are divided, and while Bones fights for his team, his team fights for their lives. Will Bones need a new team? Stick around and find out on Mutant League. Despite the fact that Commissioner Prigg had suspended Grim McSlam, the deranger refused to give up. Bones Justice's effort against the crazed mutant was nothing short of heroic. Listen up, kids. I got one message for you. Play fair. That's the only way you'll ever really be a winner. Defense! While Bones is definitely the leader of the monsters, the team has really come into its own.
getting solid performances from fellow rookie Razor Kid, longtime monsters Mo and Sputer, and recent acquisition Dark Star. Yet despite their success, Monsters, monsters, monsters! Who will rid me of these infernal creatures? I hate the monsters. I'm with you on that one, ZP. Though I wouldn't mind getting a piece of the endorsement money they're gonna make. Okay. I knew I kept you around for a reason. The way to destroy the monsters is to reward them lavishly. Okay, is there a little bit more to this plan? Oh, much more. <laughs> Computer darling, transfer funds to pay the food service bill. Transaction processed. And pay for field rental time too. Transaction request denied. Insufficient funds. Insufficient? Um, no, 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 no. Computer darling, you must have misread my account. Try again. Supplemental request denied. Scrod! Come in. EM baby, I'll be blunt. The monsters are hotter than summer in Vegas. Now's the time to cash in. I am not selling the team. Team? Sell? No! I'm talking ads, posters, endorsements, money! Forget it. You're Prig's agent. This is just a scam. Eleanor, you hurt me. I'm a free agent. I go where the dollars are. And the monsters are coming up green. Your contract will be with me. I'm not giving Prig a piece of this action. Well, I'd have to have my lawyers look at it, of course. That was gonna be my next suggestion. Attention, monsters! Please report to your locker room immediately. All right, monsters, listen up! I've decided to let Kang represent the team for endorsements. He's going to bring in dollars for the team and for you. Boys, let me cut to the chase. I'm talking six figures apiece. I'll take you from the basement to the penthouse. Tacos to caviar. Who wants a seat on the Kang Express? Yo, yo, yo. How do we know this is legit? Razor, King Slime, am I right? Yeah. But I saw him put a lot of cash and play his pockets. This could be real. It is real, darlings. My lawyers checked it out. There are no ties to Prig. What's the deal? Endorsements, bro. We're rich. You were right. Going with the monsters was the way. Race? <laughs> Not with Kang. What about last time? BJ, this is with me. I'm just a guy trying to make a few bucks. A few million. Want some? Kang, get out of my face before I turn yours inside out. Come on, we're not dimworms, Bones. That's right, Bonesy. I do know a little bit about business, you know. Don't kid yourselves. He's vermin. Hey, hey, hey! Slime, maybe, but vermin, never. He'll be cool. Bones, wait up! Look, just because you don't eat, sleep, drink, or care about anything but the League doesn't mean we don't. He's playing you, Rays. Come on, bro. I'm working my tail off here. It's time for a payoff. Just don't let it affect the team. Now, Bones, calm down. They said they'd be here. Where are they? Practice was supposed to start ten minutes ago. Their commercial isn't finished yet. Action! The only thing that gets me more amped than the Mutant League is cruising in this Turbo Whaler from Mutant Motors. Mutant Motors! Where speed is king! We've got a game coming up against the Ooze. Am I the only one who cares? They said it wouldn't take too much longer. You got that right. <laughs> Ah, the price of fame. 
<laughs> All right, listen up, superstars. Nobody on this team is ever going to skip a practice again. I don't care if you've got 10 commercials to do. We're in first place. We deserve the money. Darkstar's right, bro. The team's gelling. <laughs> but Bones is right, too. It can't happen again. Let's just get ready for the game. Fellas! Ooh. Kang's limo is waiting. Uh. You're running late for the promotional appearance. <laughs> but we've got a game. Relax. The Slayers do this kind of stuff all the time. That's why they're not in first place. No one's leaving. Bones. <laughs> You're being silly. They'll be back in plenty of time for the game. Besides, I need the money to pay for practice time and equipment. I hope it's worth it. With five minutes to game time, the monsters are still nowhere to be found! You sure this is the right way to go? Good shortcut. No problem. I'm starting not to like this. Calm down, you wimp. Bones has got you crazy. Nothing's gonna happen. Zhuka, it's time to trip the monster's roster. I'm going to miss that car. What about Thug? I don't miss employees. I exploit them. To avoid a forfeit, the monsters have elected to play with the practice squad. When I get my hands on Razor, I'll tear them apart. <laughs> ah! I hope the extra money was worth it. Now we've got to play the game with our practice squad, and that reeks! Attention all mutants, attention all mutants. The rejuvenation chambers are back online in case of any emergencies in today's soccer match. Without question, Bones Justice is reaching deep down inside to keep the monsters this close against the slimy ooze roster! What a move by Justice as he drives for the net! <laughs> what a hit! And the O's control the ball! It's obvious that with the absence of the monster's starting lineup, the O's' strategy is to take Bones out of the game early! Liquid Laser is screaming toward the goal! Witnessing the downfall of the monsters, Kay. I know, my wallet's crying. I really could have made a fortune with those guys. Liquid laser shoots! <laughs> and the O's take the lead! And Bones is still down! Oh, Raze, where are you? What happened? Uh, are you okay? Dark Star? Over here. I'm okay. Which is more than I can say for Thug. Mo, Sputer, see if you can get us out of here. Let's 
trail the ooze, two to nothing. The story so far is Bones Justice's incredible performance for the depleted monsters. He's got the ball again with a chance to score. Oh, Bones is still having trouble with that leg. Yeah, I give it up, Bones. They got the leg. Yeah. The game's not over yet. What a shot by Justice! And in the Mutant League, the goalie's head also counts as a point! So the score is tied! And that's the half! As Bones, Justice, and the beleaguered monsters fight for their lives! Way to go, Bones! You're keeping us in the game! It's too bad your leg fell off! What's too bad is that I don't have any teammates. Bama Rays! I need you here, not on the set of some fancy commercial. We'll send a juvenation team for him! We gotta get to the game! This is Bob Babble inviting you to stay tuned for an MLSN grudge match starring that ever-bombastic and caustic Grim Max Slam! And the shop tongue and flamboyant Madman! has played brilliantly today, but in the second half, the Ooze simply overpowered the Monsters. And with this loss, the Monsters fall out of first place. Ah, the sweet, sweet thrill of victory. Bones, bro! What happened to you? We lost, that's what happened. Hope your endorsements are going well. Oh, come on, we almost got wiped out in the mutant zone. Wouldn't have happened if you were here. I know. I feel bad about this. Listen, we'll get out of our contracts. Yeah, why don't you do that? Sorry, monsters, but no can do. Your contract has a no tear-up clause. Like it or not, you gotta be where I tell you to be for the rest of the season. What happens if they walk? I'll be forced to sue them and Eleanor. I don't like to do that sort of thing. I'm not litigious by nature. But in this case, I feel compelled to basically take everything they got, including the monsters. We're doomed. Not yet. The contract's with Kang, not Prig. I can get to Kang. Are you certain their contracts are ironclad? ZP, if there's one thing I know, it's sleazy contracts. And this is one of my best. How comforting. Let us hope that your best is good enough. Ken, let's talk endorsements. Don't tell me a brain clicked in and you're ready to sign up. Maybe. Bones, baby, talk to Kang! If my team's gonna reek, I might as well cash in before it's too late. I knew you'd come around. Everybody wants money. Why don't we talk in private? Anything you want, BJ. Chill, Kang. If we wipe out, it'll only take two, three months tops in the Juvenator. That thing's for athletes. It'll tear me apart! Toxic Goo! Get me out of here! Just release the monsters from their contracts. No way! I own them! 
their futures are tied to me. Sort of like the way yours is tied to me right now. You wouldn't. Try me. All right, I'll cancel the contracts. I signed it. Now get me out of here. With pleasure. Now that I have a team to go back to. Boss, I was on the verge of becoming toxic goo. Then I presume. You have already prepared mentally to spend time in the Rejuvenator. I'm no use to you in the Rejuvenator! If I need you, I'll know where to find you. As promised, MLSN presents The Grudge Match! Mad Men and Grand Max Slam are warming up on the left track! Fortunately, they never caught E.T., but you can in the E.T. giveaway at McDonald's. An extra value with every $2.99 Big Mac combo and all medium or large soft drinks. You could get free passes to ride the new E.T. adventure at Universal Studios Hollywood. Free Marriott Resort vacations. Four free flights and $25 discounts on USA. Play the E.T. giveaway at McDonald's, where extra values are easy to find. Good parents, my Cabbage Patch Kids. The Cabbage Patch Kids. Each doll is different, and you can pretend to adopt them. My baby has a real diaper. You can love and care for them, like your very own. You're a pal. You're the only one. I love you.
They're each one of a kind. They're Cabbage Patch Kids. You can give them all your love. Cabbage Patch Kids are each sold separately. Each doll comes with a pretend birth certificate and adoption papers from Coleco. Hope you love Mutant League still. And uh, for the odd reason that I like putting these two together, we're going directly into Skeleton Warriors. Don't know why I like having these things like paired together, just like I always do the Anthropomorphic Trilogy. I do the Cowboy Trilogy. Uh, these are just two, and I just sort of like having them together. So here you guys go. This is Skeleton Warriors. This is episode 8, and this is Past Perfect Future Tense. Enjoy. These are the tales of the Skeleton Warriors. see into the future, would we find ourselves free to attempt change? Or would we be crushed under the weight of inevitability? Would that knowledge save us or enslave us? There's the mine entrance dead ahead! clear on the ground, and I didn't see anything from the air either. Wait. This place, I, I've seen it, I think. I, I can't... Are, are you alright, Guardian? I... I'm fine. My imagination's running wild, that's all. Let's just get the ore out before the Baron discovers our activities. I never imagined it would be this steep. The mine is at least 200 feet under the lake. This could double the range of our harmonic resonators. I hope the bats don't mind the company. Ah, here we are. Lightstar, bring the carrier. I'd say the Mountaineer would do us good, but without lungs, who cares? <laughs> Grab what you can and get out of here. Guardian, later. We have to get out of the mine now. Trust me. Do it. Dagger, run this to the lake. And don't muck it up like you did last time. Oh, yes, my lord. Time to finally wash my hands of dear Prince Blightstar. <laughs> Clear out! Back into the mine, quick! 
quickly. It's our only hope. my ears. Shriek, Oracula, bring me back whatever's left of those royal water rats. And keep your paws off the prince, bug boy. He's mine. This is the inside of a ventilation drill shaft. Oh, that'd be my guess, too. We'll just have to climb out of here. Ready, Uncle? <clears throat> How far do you think we've come? A mile, maybe. Seems like forever, though. Let's hope this is the only way out. We're at the top of the mountain. Those legion of lightweights are around here somewhere. I can feel it in my bones. Oh, with all your arms, you think you could aim. Come on, Oracula. Looks like our fleshy friends are moving up in the world. This'll help with the wind. Come on, Uncle. Even you have to eat. No thanks. I'm not hungry. All right, Uncle. It's time to talk. What did you mean when you said you'd seen what happened here before? I, I never wanted to burden you with the, the horror that I carry inside me. Tell us. Please, we, we want to help. I've... I I've seen the future. It was the beginning of this life for me. Who I am, the way I live, what I stand for, everything. It was a very long time, and so many difficult miles ago. The world was a different place back then. My mentor, Professor Augusta Janov, believed that nothing was impossible. Ursac, the remote access chip goes in slot five. Behold, star pupil, the future is ours. Assuming your theory on time-space continuum displacement is valid, otherwise your future scope may only be good for inducing migraines at the speed of light. We'll know soon enough. Won't we? And by refracting light images to correlate with our individual brain waves, the future scope will show each of us the future. Not quite. We'll each witness our own possible futures. Possible futures? We do have free will, Ursac. The future, I believe, is alterable. has been born to the king! A prince has been born! We must be prepared for the onslaught. Skeletons who walk the land as humans will be everywhere! They'll overrun and dominate the kingdom! Ursac, 
What kind of leader would I be if I panicked the people, terrified the country, all because my brother was having bad dreams? Ursac, it's time to put the war behind you. Fine! If you won't save the dynasty, then I shall! But why, Uncle? Why must you go? Someday, I, I promise you'll understand. But for now, Prince Justin, you must learn to be strong, loyal, and quick-witted. But I... I don't want you to go. <sighs> Let them come for me now. Professor Janov and I dismantled the future scope and destroyed the records. Your father was right. If the rest of the world had seen what we'd seen, there would have been pandemonium. You... You mean you knew about the skeleton warriors, but did nothing to stop it from happening? No, Justin. All I could do was prepare myself and wait. I, I didn't know when it would happen. After a while, I wasn't even sure if it would happen. So tell us, Uncle. What else does the future hold? I only have flashes, like back in the mine. Maybe it's better that way. Dealing with the present can be challenge enough. Well, where are they? They've escaped to the top of the mountain. In all that snow and ice. Then let's give them a warm reception. Grimskull! What, what, Uncle? What is it? An early morning wake-up call. It's Baron Dark! Blast! Run right into the trap! <laughs> In here, quickly! Oh no! This is new. Bad morning to you. I think we're about to be fresh squeezed. I've got an idea. That's one more than I've got. Was your idea? Part A. Part B's your territory. Ready? Oh! Gotcha! Hey! Oh! We better find Guardian and Grimskull before that... Whatever it is down there gives up Dark and his boys. <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> Grimskull! Shh! Over here! But come quietly. Gently. Hey, now he's a friend. Come on, Guardian. Slowly. Until he gets used to you. Hey, remember you're good with animals. But this... <laughs> It's skeletons! Take cover! Hey! 
Are you all right? Yes. And I think I have a new friend. A protector, it seems. We have to find Lightstar and Talon and get off this mountain. Sky Cycles, hurry! They must be near here. What now, big brother? My polarizer's low on power. How about you? Empty. And our resonators could start an avalanche. Maybe bury Guardian and Grimskull. But we can't hide forever. I know. I'd fly us out of here, but without cloud cover, they'd pick us off in an instant. We'll just have to pick our way down off the mountain. Let's go! Your brother and sister are in big trouble! Where are they? Tell me what's happening to them. I don't know for certain, but we have to stop Talon from making the biggest mistake of her life! I have to rest for a minute. Okay. I'll start a small fire. Try to raise Guardian and Grimskull on the comm link again. All right. Great team. This is Gold Leader. Do you copy? Over. <laughs> All right, go on, boy. Fetch. <laughs> oh, you mindless mutt. You're supposed to fetch it like this. <laughs> Hmm. Separated the way they are, the Legion of Losers are vulnerable. We have to take them now before they regroup. But how, my lord? We can't seem to locate them. Young Grimskull has learned to mask his thoughts well. Search the mountain again. They're here somewhere. <laughs> Lose their tracks. The wind has swept them clean. <laughs> He's on to something. <laughs> I think he wants us to follow. Yes, we must follow the wolf. The kingdom is doomed to be lost on a snowbound mountain. I've seen it. You're no seer, Ursac. Your code name shall be Talon. And you shall be known as Grimskull. I think he wants us to follow. Hurry through the shadows. Uncle! Grimskull, you must hurry through the shadows to save Lightstar. But I, I don't know where they are. Careful. That last step is a doozy. I've got him in my sight. Ripe for plucking. <laughs> Don't lose them this time. Such easy prey. It hardly seems fair. But just the way I like it. <laughs> I know where they are. Take us, quickly.
take out Baron Duck! Even if I have to use a whole mountain to do it! No more family picnics for you two. Hang on! What? No! I'll never forgive myself. Ah, don't bother. Just throw down them weapons, mate. Easy now. No itchy trigger fingers. Back on! Stop it! Stop it! No, no, no! I owe you. Are we cleared for landing, Uncle? As I live and breathe, we thought you were both. So did we. Talon pulled us through. Glad to see you two haven't left the party yet. Who's your friend there? My new traveling companion. But he doesn't have a name. He understands the shadows and how to survive. I'll call him Stalker. Hmm. Hello, Stalker. Even with what I've seen, or think I've seen, the future's looking brighter. <laughs> yes, indeed. Much brighter. If those who forget the past are doomed to repeat it, what of those who already know their future? Never underestimate the future. It's all we have to look forward to. <laughs> If you must eat in between meals, why not eat nutritious dishes? Like fill a bowl with ice cubes and add raw cauliflower. Stuff celery with cheese and let it chill for half an hour. Add carrot sticks and olives and any other knickknacks. Then keep this by the TV set for when you want those quick snacks. Well? Well, but well, I'm waiting. Could you make me a banana? Okay, you're a banana. Hey, guys, we're going back to the battle on planet Endor. But I've just got reports. We walk with both. All troops report to base. Lava, glider tech, kick the dirt. Our furry friends are great allies, Leia. Accessories and action figures all sold separately. Man, the catapult, wicked fire. The bunkers did bad. Let's blow the force shield. We did it. The Empire's finished this time. Speeder bikey, what combat glider, assault catapult, and action figures sold separately. Only from Kenner Star Wars Return of the Jedi Collection. Hey, I hope you guys are still liking the, the Skeleton Warriors. Um, yet again, it was one I had forgot that I hadn't aired in a while. And I apologize. If you guys were one of the ones that were asking for it, there you go. I will bring it back. So sometimes it's all you got to do is ask for it. Um, sometimes, though, like with Ricky Rocket, I'm not going to bring it back. That That's that's just offensive for most at this point. So we're keeping it going. And um, last week I brought you Filmation's Justice League. Uh, yes, somebody pointed this out. Yes, Filmation had the rights at the same time for Justice League and T-Titans, but they also had Batman and Robin, which they were showing by itself. They didn't add Batman and Robin to the Filmation, Justice League, or Teen Titans. As you watch, they're in neither team. So Batman and Robin are not in any of these Filmation ones because they're in their own cartoon themselves. So... 
we're bringing you one of my favorite comic book characters of all time. And that is Green Lantern. Um, sucker for Green Lantern. Still this day, it's it's one of the longest running books I've collected. Uh, ever since I was a little kid, still collect it to this day. Um, you know, maybe I didn't have them all, but once I got to a certain point, had to have my had to have my Green Lantern. And I like the fact that it's a huge team now. You know, when I was a kid, it was mostly Hal Jordan, but you know, little bit of uh, John Stewart. Now we got John Stewart, Greg Gardner, uh, Kyle Rayner. We got Baz. We got you know the, the core. So they, they go on a kilowog and all them. You've got tons of them. I like the Green Lantern. But I'm not going to go on that too much. Because here we go. This is JLA 67 Green Lantern. And uh, we're bringing you three episodes because they're relatively short. So enjoy. By authority of the mystic guardians of the universe on the far distant planet Oa, Al Jordan test pilot becomes the Green Lantern. A cosmic crusader whose magical power ring at his bidding accomplishes the impossible. In his continuing fight against interplanetary evil, Green Lantern, Guardian of the Galaxy. Planet Oa, center of the universe. There in the great central hall, beneath Oa's great cosmic power battery, the immortal guardians of the universe are troubled. There may be only moments. We must warn Green Lantern. Now, in a sleek rocket craft, high above planet Earth, Green Lantern, in his guise of test pilot, Hal Jordan, gets the message. Take heed, Green Lantern. I hear you, Guardian. Evil Star has escaped galactic confinement. Beware. Evil Star? Wow. Better get down fast. What's up, boss? Big trouble, Cairo. Green Lanternsville, huh? You know it. Meanwhile, the interplanetary lord of crime, Evil Star, streaks toward Earth. <laughs> Soon all on Earth shall know my star band surpasses any power in the universe. Let those who worship evil's might beware my power. Green Lantern's light. Gibbs! Evil Star! Outside, Cairo, hurry! Gun him down! They're frozen solid! And I'm next! Not if I can help it! We meet again, Green Lantern! Try my beam for size, Evil Star! have my revenge on the Guardians themselves. You sure showed Evil Star who's boss, right boss? Not for long, Cairo. He's plotting mischief on Oa. I'd better get up there as soon as I give my ring a full 24-hour charge. Great Nebula, the Power Lantern's gone dead. Wait, Green Lantern. With my radio, sometimes this makes it work. <laughs> Good work, Cairo. Charge up while it's hot. Why is it flickering? I'm afraid that means Evil Star is already on Oa. Come on, Cairo. Up we go. That's 
should hold up Green Lantern. Now to take care of the Guardians. Evil Star! The same. Now, Guardians of the Universe, since there is no one to protect you... Don't you believe it, Evil Star? Great galaxy, my ring! Without this, you are powerless! Now I control the universe! Ooh, catch, boss! Got it! Meddler! You'll pay for that! Party's over, Evil Star! We'll see about that! Get him, GL! Try and catch me while there is still time! Time? What did he mean by that? I fear Evil Star plans to keep Green Lantern occupied until the 24-hour limit of his ring's power has elapsed. That should keep you busy for a while. You're wasting your effort, Evil Star. No, I'm wasting your time. Let's see you handle my life force beam. Got, got to get out of this fast. All right. Have you enough time left to overcome this? Playing games, Evil Star. Huh? What? Now, let's test your power. Damn. No, stop! Go on, Evil Star. Fire another blast from your star band now. No, no. It will destroy me. Back to galactic jail for you, Evil Star. Good job, Green Lantern. Take his star band, Cairo. With pleasure, boss. This bubble will hold him until he's returned to galactic confinement. We thank you, Green Lantern. Always at your service, Guardians of the Universe. Let's go home, Cairo. <laughs> Authority of the mystic guardians of the universe on the far distant planet Oa, Al Jordan test pilot becomes the Green Lantern, a cosmic crusader whose magical power ring at his bidding accomplishes the impossible. In his continuing fight against interplanetary evil, Green Lantern, guardian of the galaxy. Rocketing a highly advanced jet craft through trial maneuvers, test pilot Hal Jordan, secretly the Green Lantern, is in radio contact with his Venetian friend and mechanic Cairo at ground control. All tests affirmative, Cairo. Cutting in the landing pattern now. Check, boss. Runway 4 is cleared for landing. Meet you there. not like him to disappear without a word. Far out in space, Green Lantern's young companion is now a prisoner. A Borg, a fugitive interplanetary raider. Look, Buster, you gonna tell me why you holding me? Silence. There it comes now. What's that? It is an asteroid from a parallel dimension, which once a year appears in this dimension for precisely one hour and on which the guardians of the universe can find for life the worst criminals in the cosmos. Why are you going to do it? To free those criminals who will then work for me. But, 
But what about... You, little man, are my insurance against the Green Lantern. <laughs> After a fruitless search for the missing Cairo, an anxious Hal Jordan returns to his dormitory quarters. Power Lantern signal from the Guardians of the Universe. Make haste, Green Lantern. You must stop the criminal org from raiding the interdimensional prison asteroid. Great meteors. Could that have something to do with Cairo's disappearance? Let those who worship evil's might beware my power. Green Lantern's light. Hurry, time is slipping away. Have you taken care of the boy, Cairo? I have left him in Creature Valley, sir. Excellent. By the time Green Lantern arrives to rescue him, this world will vanish back into limbo, together with them. Blast off! Arriving over the dark side of the asteroid, Green Lantern, searching for Cairo, illuminates the terrain with his power beam. Must find Cairo fast. Only a short time left before this world dissolves back into its own dimension. Boss! Boss! Here I am! Am I ever glad you made the scene before this place goes poof? Only minutes left to bring those criminals back. <laughs> Now it's coming for me. Got to try something else. Only two or three minutes still remain, Org. <laughs> At this rate, Green Lantern will never get off the asteroid before it vanishes. Great Guardians! Must get away! Squeezing! Out of me! Jump, jump, you jackals! Green Lantern! Nice work, Cairo. Hop aboard. Any moment now, this asteroid is due to vanish. Don't! Look out, boss! Behind you! This calls for a beam tunnel. The return of this world to its own dimension. Green Lantern, help! Have you free in a second, Cairo? My shot, boss! Gee, boss! Those criminals still on the loose! Yes. And in about one minute, that prison asteroid will be gone. This capsule will protect you. I'll pick up the jet trail from their exhaust. Look, or Green Lantern coming at us. Blast him! Destroy him! This ought to knock out his cannon fast. One second remains now. Okay, Cairo. Not a second too soon for me, boss. Green Lantern reporting to Guardians. Mission accomplished. Well done, Hal Jordan. Once again, you have earned the sacred trust we bestowed upon you in the powers of the Green Lantern. By 
authority of the mystic guardians of the universe on the far distant planet Oa, Hal Jordan test pilot becomes the Green Lantern, a cosmic crusader whose magical power ring at his bidding accomplishes the impossible. In his continuing fight against interplanetary evil, Green Lantern, guardian of the galaxy. Planetoid Sargasso, grim and forbidding, a lone stellar mystery that awaits the approach of unsuspecting space travelers. Ruled by a beautiful but vicious queen who aspires to rule the universe. Queen Serena, another fleet draws within range. Ah, uh, perhaps they shall lure Green Lantern into my trap. Bring them down. Instantly from the planetoid surface, weird emanations suddenly swirl out and snare the passing trap. Not very far away, a powerful experimental ship from Earth bursts through atmosphere into outer space. An apprentice test pilot at his controls, accompanied by Cairo, Hal Jordan's Venusian helper. He's off, Tom. You're going too far out. He's going to make first-class test pilot, boss. Sure, Cairo. Now, I want you to peel off, Tom. You're too close to the Sargasso planetoid. Holy smokes, you're right, Mr. Jordan. Yo! We're caught in the Sargasso current! That weird sound! Can't stand it! Losing control! No time to recharge my power ring. Gotta get to them fast! Let those who worship evil's might beware my power! Green Lantern's light! As Green Lantern streaks to the rescue, the young test pilot is ushered before the evil Queen Serena. The boy who was with this Earthling escaped us, my queen. No matter. He can go nowhere. Now Green Lantern will surely come for these Earthmen. Green Lantern! Over here! Cairo, how did you... Look, that's what's been pulling down all the ships. It won't anymore, Cairo. After a bath in green heat. So, at last, the fish has taken the bait. Only Green Lantern could destroy my Electronomagna wave apparatus. Hold tight, Cairo. This doesn't look like a friendly welcoming committee. Hey, cut that out, you creeps. Watch me get them to stun themselves. Oh, ah, ah, holy God. I shall do in Green Lantern myself. First, the Magno Beam, attuned to his brain waves. Now, my pet, go. Follow the beam. Quickly, get his ring! We have it, O oh Queen. Now he is powerless. Lock him up and guard him with your lives. Oh, no! They've taken him prisoner! Now, my loyal subjects, without Green Lantern to protect them, the Guardians of the Universe shall fall before my might. Stand by to blast off! Our fleet blasted off! Aye, this means the end for the mighty guardians of the universe. A short while later on planet Oa, in the great central hall that houses the immortal guardians of the universe. Sainer's fleet approaches, and we are helpless. We must find a way to return Green Lantern's ring to him. What about the Venetian boy, Cairo? Ah, yes. He is our only hope. I will contact him. Oh, cut it up, BP. This is no time for play. I gotta find Green Lantern and Cairo, the Guardian. Listen, Cairo, Green Lantern and his ring are in the topmost chamber of the castle. Go, help him. We'll call. Over and out. Bad scene. This window's too small for me. There he is. But how am I going to reach him? 
You can squeeze through a BP. Come on, please. In, in there. Look, BP, through window. Hurry, I'm begging you. Great work, Beastie. He's escaping. Sound the alarm. Thanks, Cairo. Hop aboard. Here come more troops, boss. No time to lose. Gotta knock them out fast. That's Belgian them, boss. Now, to wrap them up in a tight beam bundle. Now, Cairo, you go release all the prisoners and get back to Earth in the test ship with Tom while I go to Oa to intercept Sirena. Real cool, boss. See you back home. Green Lantern! He has escaped! Destroy him, quickly! Blast him with destructo bombs! He has wiped them all out! Now he... Ah! You've got a date, oh evil queen! with the Guardians of the Universe. So the Guardians sentenced Cyrena to a long term of galactic confinement. Thanks to your quick thinking, Cairo. Don't forget BP here, boss. Right. Thank you, BP. Boss, can I? Sure, Cairo. Keep him. I think he'll make us a fine mascot. That Joe's in trouble. No, my coppers are in trouble. That Joe is Sergeant Slaughter. Don't mess with Sergeant Slaughter, he's as strong as they come. I see him take on a hundred cobras and set them on the run. Meet Sergeant Slaughter and his Triple T tank. Sergeant, Sergeant Slaughter is now a part of G.I. Joe. G.I. A Joe. real American hero. Live the adventure of G.I. Joe. And look out, Cobra. Sergeant Slaughter comes with Triple T tank. Cobra figures and equipment sold separately. My folks make sure I get a good breakfast. You know, plenty of fiber and all that stuff. Also, they bought me nice school clothes. They got me a computer, a video camera, a compact disc player. But the problem is, hardly any of this stuff can really help me with my schoolwork. There is something you could have which would help you a lot. Do you know what that is? No, but I'm afraid you're going to tell me. Uh, yes. It's the new Encyclopedia Britannica. Encyclopedia Britannica? Now you tell me. I've got a report due tomorrow. On what? On the exploration of space. Take a look at this. From the first beeps of Sputnik to the triumph of the Apollo moon landing. Hey, I'm impressed. This way, I wouldn't have to worry about getting to the library. It's right in my own home. Day and night. All right. Well, since this has turned out to be a Britannica commercial, I guess you're going to tell me how somebody could get a set. Actually, I thought I might, yeah. And I suppose you're going to throw one of those 800 numbers up on the screen. Am I right? Might as well. And there it is. Now you can own the Encyclopedia Britannica. Just call this toll-free number and we'll send you this free booklet telling you everything you need to know about your key to the information age. I'm typing it into my computer so I won't forget it. Good. And just for previewing Britannica in your home, your family will receive this three-volume desk reference set. Do we get to keep it? Yes. So if you would be interested in owning the new Britannica... I'm thinking it over. Just call this number. Encyclopedia Britannica. The library that never closes. I thought it was my key to the information age. Uh, it's both, actually. Hope you guys are still liking the, the, the old school filmation Justice League and superhero cartoons. Oh, man. Not a lot. I had those back in the day on VHS tape, bootleg, because it's the only way you can get them. Um, but we'll continue we're trucking on down the road, I'm bringing you Mask. Um, I skipped a week or two, but Mask is back with uh, episode 8, and this is the Rotex. There, that's it. Oh, I don't think it's working. That's because you're probably scaring all the birds away. Oh, I'm not. Works. 
That's great, Scott. Maybe you'll get an A on your science project. Really? If you ask me, it's for the birds. Turn it off. Right. Why don't you take a break? The hot dogs are almost ready. Gee, now I know how a scarecrow feels. Oh! Come on, T-Bob. They can't hurt you. It's not the birds. Something bit me. Something bit me. You're a machine, T-Bob. Nothing can bite you. Wait a second, Scott. Look at this. Hmm, that's strange. You're telling me. Let's get out of here. We may not be able to. I don't believe this. Matt Tracker calling Buddy Hawks. What's that? It's some kind of insect, but it's actually eating the metal. Wow, look, they're everywhere. Metal-eating bugs? I'm out of here. This is serious. Uh, I could be a bug's dinner any second. That's why Dad called the PNA. Matt, I have the information you requested. I'm afraid the situation is very serious. I figured that. What are those things? They're called Rotex, a special breed of metal-eating insect created in a top-secret military lab for warfare. Just drop them behind enemy lines and let them go to town. The military lab near where you camp just confirmed that one of their colonies of Rotex is missing. I'm doomed. That's the end of me. The worst part is that they're due to multiply in 12 hours. If that happens, there will be no stopping them. All metal in the world will eventually be destroyed. Oh, I gotta get out of here fast! Yeah! Yeah! T-Bot, slow down! Okay, Dwayne. Mask is going into the pest exterminator business. Computer, priority one emergency. Select the best mask agents for this mission. Confirmed. Selection complete. Recommended personnel, Brad Turner, expert motorcycle and helicopter pilot. Vehicle code name, Condor. <laughs> Alex Sector, computer and communications expert, zoology specialist. Vehicle code name, Rhino. Bruce Sato, mechanical engineer and design specialist, vehicle code name, Rhino. Hondo McLean, weapon specialist and field strategist, vehicle code name, Firecracker. Thank you. Uh, excuse me. What? Buddy Hawk. Master of Disguise, Intelligence Expert, Vehicle Code Name, Firecracker. Could you please hurry? We're in a rush. Uh, excuse me. Hey, where are you going? You can use that car over there. Personnel approved. Assemble Mobile Armored Strike Command. Transmitting mass signal code. Are you kidding me? You called us together to go chasing bugs? The Rotex aren't just bugs. They were developed as a military weapon. Something that could be released to destroy enemy equipment. This is no joke. I should say not. That's why we're bringing these plastic boxes along to contain them. Yeah, well, you're the animal nut, Alex. Not me. Gentlemen, let's move it. Prepare to energize masks.
hungry little devils, weren't they? When the small are many, they are stronger than the strongest. Hey, Bruce, I almost understood that. <laughs> Must be something wrong with me. Now we split up. First one to find a Rotec wins a brass ring. If the Rotec doesn't eat the ring first. Yeah, buggy, buggy, buggy. I got a nice piece of aluminum for you. I'm starting to feel like a fool doing this. Now, now, gentlemen. Don't underestimate our adversaries. I can assure you that this mission is as important as others we've undertaken. I think you'll find. Ah! Oh. The axle's broken. Eaten through. Gentlemen, we have met the enemy. We're on our way. Be there in a flash. Huh? My guidance control is shot. Gotcha. Alex, do you read me? Alex! Get them quick. Get them off your vehicle and keep them in the plastic containers. So far, we've got ten of the little blighters. Come here, you, you metal choppers. I take back everything I said. These little guys are mean. There were a lot more of them before. Where are the rest of them? These are only scouts, Matt. I expect the colony is somewhere nearby. If the Rotex are like other insects, they emit a very specific ultrasonic vibration. Now that we have captives to give me a sample, I'm sure I can pinpoint the nest. Let's do it. It's around here somewhere. This is it, gentlemen. The colony is underground. All we need to do now is collect them. Nothing to it. Ready, Bruce? Blaster, on. Lifter, on. I say, that doesn't look quite cricket. Of course those aren't crickets. He means the Rotex didn't escape. Somebody deliberately buried him here. Huh? Venom. Man! I've got to keep them away from my Rotex. It's up! Good shot, Hondo. Into the woods! Give, 
friends and help. No problem. <laughs> Now what? Looks like the gang's all here. Okay, this isn't gonna be easy. We're gonna have to fight him with everything we've got. Wow! A swarm of rotex! I'm afraid, Matt, old boy, that an orderly retreat is in order. We're gonna have to come up with something. And fast. Hey, Mayhem, I think we really got him this time. So I see. All right, they want the Rotex? We'll give them the Rotex. Bruce? Here, Bruce. Lift up. On. Bug bomb. Oh no! Mayhem, they're double crossing us. Help! Relax, I'll handle it. They're leaving us. I hate those things. Let's clear out. I'd love to stay and finish you off, but I must get my Rotex to larger living quarters before they multiply. <laughs> Listen up, you guys. Here's the situation. The Rotex are going to multiply in less than four hours. When that happens, Venom will have millions of them. And he can control them with that device of his. Right. We've got to stop them. Bruce, what can you put together with the equipment we've got left? Pogo stick? Come on. I need Thunderhawk, Bruce. You can do it. T-Bob, where are you? Go away! I don't want them to find me. T-Bob, are you in there? No. Dad's going to catch all those dumb Rotex. You don't have to be afraid. <laughs> Not much. If those Rotex track me down, I'll be munched for lunch. It's basically quite simple. The Rotex communicate with one another using ultrasonic frequencies. The trick is in finding the same frequency Mayhem's using to control them. Exactly. And unfortunately, I no longer have any Rotex to study. Keep working. Wando, how's Bruce doing with Thunderhawk? Well, Matt, he's either going to get her to fly or blow us all up. Our spy in the laboratory left the Rotex at precisely the correct coordinates. In a few more hours, we'll have an unstoppable army of these little devils. I hate them bugs. They ain't natural. I think the Rotex give old cold-blooded rats the creepy crawlies. Shut up, dagger. <laughs> Nevertheless, civilization itself depends on metal. Any country who dares oppose us will be instantly sent back to the Stone Age. I still hate them bugs. Matt, be sure Spectrum broadcasts the entire range frequencies I specified. When I hit the right one, it should drive the Rotex crazy. We hope. Hey, Matt, here she is, good as new. All right, start it, Bruce. Lift up, on. Let's cut down on the competition by hitching a ride. Go 
almost hit me! Okay, Rotex. Here comes every frequency in the books. Hope you're all listening. Broadcast the whole range of frequencies. Nothing's happening. And it must be a combination of frequencies. But that could take hours to find. We don't have the time. Wait a second. The first time the Rotex went on the rampage was when Scott was testing his bird caller. Get that frequency for me. Right, oh, Matt. Stay with him. Hey, easy, easy. I got him! I got him! T-Bob! What are you doing now? Mm, the toy chest wasn't safe enough! But that's crazy! You won't have anything to do in there! You'll go nuts with boredom! It's better than being eaten alive by horrid little bugs. How many times do I have to tell you? You're not alive. Mask calling Scott. This is Mask calling Scott. Please come in. Mask calling me? Fantastic. He's helpless. I'm going in. Uh, Alex, I'm in a bit of a tight spot here. Scott? Just play your bird collar into the microphone. Hurry, lad! You're not a hologram this time. Alex? I have it, Matt. Transmitting now. Spectrum, on. Oh, no. <laughs> huh. Looks like I really bugged mayhem. The control box! Mayhem, what are you doing up there? Uh oh. Ah, get him up! Get him up! Run! You mean bug out? Huh? Now, if I modify those frequencies a little... That's right, fellas. Back in your box. You're going home. You've had enough to eat today. Wow, T-Bob. This sure is a neat anti-Rotex box. I'm blind! I'm blind! I can see again! I'm fixed! You're lucky, T-Bob. A human eye can't be fixed like this. Scott, I'm glad you were wearing your safety goggles. Dad, I always wear them when I'm using tools. It always pays to play it safe. Gruff here. If someone asks you to try drugs, think of me and say what I'd say. And to help you, have one of these masks. Wow, thanks, McGruff. 
Now, what are you gonna say if someone asks you to try drugs? My mom and dad told me not to, and I wouldn't lie to them. Sensational. Don't use drugs. Don't use drugs. Here's how you can get a free mask. And on the back are more ways to say no and help me uh, take a bite out of crime. It's spring cleaning time in Strawberry Land. Come to help? Like to help myself to your strawberry shortcake cereal. Sure. What a fruity strawberry thing. Smells like strawberries too. And ooh, it's crispy strawberry taste. It's a very good part of this nutritious breakfast. Strawberry shortcake? I'd be glad to help. Put away more of your cereal. <laughs> <laughs> it's strawberry shortcake cereal. It's very delicious. Take a cassette out of its case, and most people just see an empty box. But Sony saw something quite different. Sony introduces the only cassette player as small as a cassette case. The incredible sounding Super Walkman. How many of you guys out there think, like me, that they should just go ahead and introduce Mask into G.I. Joe. Yeah, we got the Matt Tractor figure a few years ago, but not the same. I think they should just go ahead and add Mask into G.I. Joe, Venom into Cobra. This is Venom, Cobra Venom. Yeah, it fits perfectly. But um, I, I really think they should. So I'm, I'm, I'm a sucker for G.I. Joe, and I think if they added mass to it, it'd make it just bump it up just a little bit. So, tell me, should mask be part of G.I. Joe? Should it stay on to its own? Not saying that it's, you should just be introducing it, like a division. Like, they they should still be able to, like, oh, hey, we got to go to the G.I. Joe base and, and uh, reform, you know, refit our vehicles and stuff like that. No, not every day. It's not like Clutch is going to be hanging out with the mask team. They work independently upon themselves, but occasionally they cross over. Something like that. So, here we go, guys. I'm bringing you three new cartoons this week. Hopefully. I can say that and I have to edit all this out later. But, we're bringing you one that you've some of you have asked for. And, I found it. My Pet Monster. Um. Uh, it's funny because I, I, I went back and rewatched this first episode of My Pet Monster. And the animation doesn't feel 1980s. It feels 1990s. But it is 1990s. Or 1980s. And not 1990s. I don't know why. Tell me, tell me why I feel that way. Do you feel that way? Watch this show. Tell me. Do you feel like you're watching an 80s cartoon or a 90s cartoon? Let me know. So here you guys go. This is My Pet Monster's. Episode 1, and this is Goodbye Cuffs, Goodbye Monster. Enjoy. <laughs> Monster's gonna sneak up on us. Ah. Right, Chucky? Right, Max. 
What's that? Your latest Beaster Blaster? Yep. We'll show Beaster who's boss next time he tries to catch Monster. Yeah! We're gonna scare old Beaster back to Monster Land for good. Scare Beaster? Scare Beaster! Well, promise me you'll be careful. And don't forget to take out the trash. Today's garbage. Jill! I told you never to say the G word in front of Monster! You mean garbage? Garbage day! Mm. <laughs> What a perfect morning to retar the driveway. Yup a dee doo. Yup a dump a dump doo. Problem, Mr. Inkle? Yes! And I think you're hiding it in that can. Can, sir? Don't give me that. We know you've been keeping some sort of wild animal in that treehouse of yours. Don't we, princess? Huh. Whatever it is, it's a menace to the neighborhood, and I intend to have it taken away. Ha! I've got you now, you little. Monster doll? Hey, neat trick. Can you do that with rabbits? Gee, thanks, Mr. Hinkle. I've been looking all over for that. But, 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 I'm sure I saw it in here. Lose something, Mr. Hinkle? Jill, thank goodness you're here. Just look at this mess. Max, did you and Chucky do this? It was that, that, that creature Max is keeping. Another one? Honestly, Max brings home more stray animals than a veterinarian. He's such a softy. Don't you worry, Mr. Hinkle. Max will straighten up this monstrous mess. Right, Max? Yeah, glad to. This'll take all day to clean up. Not with a little monster help. with the key. Beats me. It does that every time it gets near the cuffs. Weird. Yeah. <laughs> About as weird as having your own pet monster. Monsterizer! No, monster. 
monster cleanup time. Cleanup time. Cleanup time. Like I said, we'll be done in no time. Then we'll finish the blaster and beaster. Monster, but Mr. Ankle came this close to catching you. Monster, sorry. How many times have I told you stop monstering Princess? Uh, one, uh, two, mm, three times. Don't you see? One day these cuffs and I won't be around to hide you, and Mr. Hinkle will take you away from me. No, monster, stay. <laughs> We friends. We sure are, and we're gonna keep it that way. But you have to promise me no more monster mischief. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Monster be good. It's ready. The ultimate bistro monster. I fix this flashlight to make it a zillion times brighter than normal. Great, let's try it. Monster cool too. Now stand back. Showtime. in for some headache. Wrong, oh, we are. Look. What happened? The batteries melted. I say we get started on a garlic blaster. Garlic blaster? Sure. It would work on Dracula, right? But not Beaster. The only thing he's afraid of is light. Hi, guys. I'm going shopping. Need anything? Yeah, new batteries. No, we don't. I'll fix it up so it'll work without batteries. Just as soon as we get back. Back? From where? From our baseball break. Baseball! Baseball! Baseball time! Monster played off! Be careful, Max. Someone might see Monzi. Don't worry, Jill. I've always got the cuffs to hide him. Baseball! Yeah! 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 What? Me worry? Fun for all! Ah! Baseball! Baseball! <laughs> okay, Chucky! Play ball! Monster God. Monster God. Monster God. We got it. Where's Monster? Wow. This looks just like the house in the return of the slimy squid people. You're scared. <laughs> the kid who saw that movie 15 times is scared. <laughs> I'm not. doesn't scare me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah? I'll prove it. See? Nerves of steel. hi -ya! Ha! <gasps> nice try, monster. You must be losing your... <laughs> Let me guess. <laughs> per 
Foxy Pig, right? Whoa! Pet monster. we get them back. How do you hide a big blue monster? Let's go ask Jill. It's not working, Max. Everyone's looking at us. Ah! Had two kids just walking their dog? Ah! Some dog. Jill has to be in one of these stores. Great sweater, Amy. Love the color. Is it on sale? Huh? <gasps> Jill? What are you guys doing? They saw Monzi. Where is he? Where he should be, hiding. Put the cuffs on him quick. We can't. Beaster's got them. Monzi's cuffs? How are you going to get him home without Mr. Hinkle seeing him and calling out the army? Any ideas? Maybe. Okay, Monzi, come on out. Monster feel. Silly. <laughs> Isn't it a perfect disguise? I think I'm in love. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Nothing's going to get by Eagle Eye Hinkle. What is it, Princess? That's funny. I don't see any. It's the... Whoa! Oh, that! Whatever it is, it's getting away! You go this way, and I'll go that way. Princess? Oh... Princess! <laughs> Princess! Oh! My poor baby! This time they've gone too far! I'm calling the police! Are you all right, my little snuffums? That was too close for comfort. We've got to get those cuffs back from Beaster. How will you find him? 
There it goes again! Hey! Maybe the key is some kind of homing device. If you follow it, it might just lead you to the cuffs. Yeah, and beast her. We've got no choice, Chucky. It's either find the cuffs or lose my pet monster. How's that blaster coming, Chucky? Almost finished. Are you sure it won't fizzle out again? Trust me, this one will work without batteries. Uh-oh. Mr. Hinkle's on his way here, and he's not alone. You guys try to get those cuffs back. I'll stall Mr. Hinkle. Of course I've seen it. It's bright blue and about ten feet tall. Hello, Mr. Hinkle. What's up? I've come for the wild beast that attacked my princess. Wild beast? Bikes away! There they go! After them! Don't let them get away! Monster never get out. <laughs> he almost no get out. <laughs> I sure hope this key knows where it's going. Hey, look! The baseball stadium. The ghost must be inside. Maybe Beaster's a baseball fan. Huh? Oh, wow! Big wow! Later! Right now we gotta get in! What do we do now? Make sex! All right! Who needs tickets? We've got monster power! Wow! This key is going crazy! The cuffs have gotta be... there! Great! Monster, get! No way! That looks like a trap! Not so great. <laughs> <laughs> Looking for something? Help, Max! Chucky, blast him! Uh, here. You blast him. <laughs> Beaster not scared of teeny flashlight. Beaster by shades. <laughs> All right, Beaster. Stop! Stop! No! Huh? What's the matter with this thing, Chucky? Um, would you believe it's solar-powered? A solar-powered flashlight? That's dumb, Chucky. You cornered Max and his pet beast. Brace yourselves. The thing's at least 15 feet tall, with blue fur, fangs galore, and tentacles. Hiya, Joe. Hello, Max. You under arrest or something, Mr. Hinkle? You wish. Search the stadium. It's hiding in there somewhere. What is? That, that, that creature of yours. <laughs> You mean this? No! Looks like the boys have got your monster, Mr. Hinkle. But I'm sure I saw it. At least, I think I'm sure. Whatever you say, Mr. Hinkle. But I'm right sure this I saw way, something. Please. I'm sure I saw something. I did, didn't I? I did. Poor Mr. Hinkle. Someday I'm going to tell him about monster. Maybe. What do you 
Sea Monster, how about some? Baseball! Baseball! I'm first up! Second up! Yeah. <laughs> All New Tic Tac Toes, a good hot meal. And when you get three X's or O's on your spoon, you win. Thank goodness for Chef Boyardee. Tic 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 Tac Toes. With and without meatballs. Yeah. Why my mom should take me to Showbiz Pizza by Jeffrey Allen Adams. It's because I have been good at school and home, and I have not picked fights with my sister. Very much. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Does it? Doesn't it? Didn't it feel like a '90s cartoon? I don't know. I I, I don't know. It's the, something inside me. I I can. All right. We're bringing you a cartoon that up until about a month ago I never even knew existed, and it was a filmation cartoon. And I thought I knew all the filmation cartoons, but this one snuck past me. Uh, you can tell it's filmation, art style, all that fun stuff. Uh, but here you guys go. This this is a weird cartoon. Man, seriously. This is Sports Billy. Um, the fact he drags a bag around and he can open stuff up like pim particles and pull everything out of it. But this is Mr. Hyde's Monster from Sports Billy. Enjoy. <laughs> Doing a little tidying up. A clean control room is a happy control room. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. I am Vanda, Queen of the Universe. I know of the drug you've created. In your serum, we could rule the world. But my serum isn't tested. To use it could be dangerous. <laughs> There's no danger. Try the drug now on yourself. Think of the power. Beautiful. <laughs> 
<laughs> what happened to him? The foolish doctor was willing to experiment with a dangerous drug. Now he has paid the price. <laughs> what happened to me? I've never felt so strange. to command. Do you obey? I obey. Go back to your time, Mr. Hyde. 1886. And with your drug, turn all of England into a race of monsters! Yes, my queen. <laughs> monsters! But, but Fantex, Using drugs? I know, Sip. Even for me, it's the most despicable trick ever. This is a cricket match. You're not supposed to howl at the players. <laughs> I'm howling for the lemonade man. Here comes the next pitch, Billy. The bowler tries to hit the wicket with the ball. And the batsman defends the wicket by batting the ball. It's a hit! The British are such a dignified people. And they carry that dignity right into the playing field. <laughs> Excuse me, sir, but could you... Oh, oh, they're all monsters! What's going on? Really, come on! Another lemonade, my good man. <laughs> Yikes! Both the British are dignified people, huh? Surrounding us! Time for some evasive action! Billy, we better get help! Right! Back to the time ship! Ah, good to see you, Sport Billy! <laughs> It's nicer to see you, sir. We almost didn't make it. Everyone in England is turned into a monster. What? Billy, are you sure? I'm positive. One moment, we're watching a cricket match, and then, pow, everyone goes ugly. Good heavens. Let's see what the Olympian computer says about this. Hmm. At this moment, history is being changed. Records now show that the British people were transformed into a race of monsters in the year 1886. The same condition carries into the present day. An alien being is believed responsible for the change. That explains what happened today to the people at the cricket match. Vanda, I'll bet. Could be, Lily. Whoever's behind this must be stopped. And stopped before the change occurred in the past. 1886, here we come. And I'll be waiting for you, Sport Billy, along with my friend, Mr. Hyde. <laughs> Everything is going just as planned. <clears throat> Your terribleness! Look! Oh. He, he's back to normal again. Quiet, Ove. I'll handle this. Uh, I, I feel sick. My 
dear doctor, what you need is more of this drug to make you feel better. No, no, I, I don't think I should. Come, come. Think of the power it'll give you. Excellent. Now get smart, Billy. Saeb? Saeb? Right here, your badness. I'm beaming back to Vandalusia of the future. Stay here and help Mr. Hyde make enough formula to turn all of London into monsters. And don't slip up, Sipe, or I'll have him brew up something to turn you into a worm. <laughs> <laughs> London is a beautiful city. Kind of creepy, if you ask me. No time for sightseeing now, Lily. We have to get to Scotland Yard and warn the police about Vanda. And I'll see that you don't warn them, sport, Billy. <laughs> now, according to this map, Scotland Yard should be right around... Yeah. What's with him? <laughs> what was that thing? I'm not sticking around to find out. <laughs> now I have you. Halt where you are. You. I'm taking you in, Mr. Hyde. Not this time, my dear detective. Watch out! <laughs> Are you all right? Yes, thanks to you, miss. Inspector Olivia Fairfax of Scotland Yard. Gee, a lady detective. London's finest at your service. By the way, who are you? Well, I'm Billy. I'm Lily. And that's Willy. <laughs> it's a very strange case. For weeks, that monster has been terrorizing the people of London with his destructive antics and horrifying looks. Poor guy. We all can't be born beautiful. <laughs> the creature calls himself Mr. Hyde. Of course. The old story of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Strange. I'm not familiar with that story. It hasn't been written yet. In the story, Dr. Jekyll discovers a dangerous drug and uses it on himself. I say, Mr. Hyde is actually Jekyll under the influence of drugs. They're one and the same. We must stop Jekyll before he spreads the drug. There's a doctor by that name on the next street. We're off. Ah, ta-ta, chaps. A delightful custom, this tea time. <laughs> <laughs> then ought to be real happy with this monster formula you've made, Mr. Hyde. I I'm Jekyll. I'm Dr. Jekyll. Drugs too mm. dangerous to use on people. It's making me sick. Oh, no. If he loses his nerve now, Vanda will blame me. Come on, Doc. Try another whiff. It'll put some color back in your face. Dr. Jekyll, are you in there? Who is it? Inspector Fairfax of Scotland Yard. May I come in? It's the police. They know. They can't catch you if you're Mr. Hyde. Yes, of course. You're right. Dr. Jekyll, 
Are you in there? There's nobody home. Quickly. There he goes. Lily, you and Willie stay here in case he doubles back. Billy, come with me. <laughs> I'll lead those fools on a merry chase. <laughs> <laughs> Billy, Miss Fairfax told us to wait here. You wouldn't walk out on her, would you? Walk out, no. Run, yes. There's nothing to be afraid of. Th that's what you think, Smarties. Sight! I got him! I got him! And next on the list is Sport Billy! <laughs> so, you thought you could capture Mr. Hyde, eh? <laughs> well, the tables have turned. If there's any of Dr. Jekyll left in you, you'd let us go. Jekyll! Don't mention that sniveling weakling to me! I'm the powerful one now! Your power comes from the misuse of a dangerous drug. That drug will destroy you if you don't give it up. I've seen others, children even, badly hurt because they didn't have the willpower to stop taking drugs. Do you want to throw away your life like that? I... no. I won't listen. Vanda promised me power. Great power if I would be faithful. We've got to act fast before your friends get hurt. Leave it to me. I say, what's that? Just call it Billy's lucky bag of tricks. to see me? Sure. Drop in any time. Oh, no. He's got the bottle. Farewell, Spot Billy. We shall not meet again. <laughs> Are you both all right? Fine, but they got away. <coughs> what is it, boy? Hey, look at this. It's the antidote to the Hyde Serum. That's the cure. The antidote should reverse the effect of the drug. Maybe there's still hope for Dr. Jekyll. Quick, we've got to get it to him before the drug takes over his mind completely. We'll catch up to you, Olivia. First, we have to run an errand. Ah, oh, Spark is here, Billy. What have you discovered? It looks like Vanda has control of the legendary Mr. Hyde. And his dangerous formula. You mean the drug that turns men into monsters? Exactly. We have to stop Vanda now, or this drug will create monsters in the future. We need to know how Hyde and Vanda will pass along the drug. No doubt by infecting something that everyone in England has in common. Hmm. Well, there's fish and chips. Let's see, drinking tea, the London Bridge. Hmm. Let's see, tea drinking, London Bridge. That's it. Of course that's it. <laughs> Watch it. London Bridge, drinking tea, the city's water supply. Of course, the Thames runs right through London. It's the city's water lifeline. Hyde will try to contaminate the Thames River with the drug. We're off to London Bridge. Hurry, Billy. The future of England depends on you.
Vendor's gonna be so proud of us. <laughs> Especially me. There they are, up there. Come on. We've got to stop them from dumping that drug. Hide! Oh! Smart Billy! Oh no, I'd better scram. I'll take that, please. <laughs> Wait a minute, Dr. Jekyll. Is that what you want? Letting a drug control your life? And the lives of everyone in England forever? Don't listen to them, Hyde. You have two choices, Doctor. The antidote which could save you. Or the drug which will destroy you. Hyde, you must obey Vanda. So, so weak. This is just what the doctor ordered, I think. My dear friends, I, I don't know how I'll ever thank you. Oh, Dr. Jekyll. I blew it again. It's a good thing Vanda wasn't here to see it. Oh, yikes. You want to bet? Oh, no! Bean, Tata, Cheerio, and Aware. No, oh, that's French. Oh, Billy, I just loved Victoria, England. And Miss Fairfax was so inspiring. Maybe someday I'll be a lady detective. Just call me... Inspector Willie Private Nose. Aha! A tasty piece of evidence. Well, Lily, this case proved that you have to get to know yourself. Because feeling good comes from deep inside.
Out they go to spend their dough without their common sense. They're the dough nuts. Stanley Slush was always rushed. He had no time to waste. He never thought before he bought. He simply bought in haste. So when he needed camping gear, he gave this speedy rundown. A flashlight and knitting bag intend to make it fast because I intend to make it there by sundown. The salesman did his very best to demonstrate the goods, but Stanley shouted, Wrap them up! I'll try them in the woods! So when he got to Mount Magoo and picked his camping site, he couldn't figure out the tent. The zipper on the bag was bent, and batteries had not been sent with Stanley Slush's light. As Stanley sat beneath a rock and watched the rain begin, the moral of this story at last was clear to him. Take time to test the things you buy before you leave the store. Know what's included, what to do. Make sure it isn't broken too because my friend unless you do it doesn't rain it falls attention earth parents galactic news flash we're watching the ewoks from return of the jedi they're celebrating because kids everywhere love their ewok family hut we can help the tropical skywalker hurry ewoks let's take the wagon princess nisa the ewoks save the day Yay! Yeah, it's a galaxy of fun. The Ewok Family Hut and other Wicked the Ewok toys, each sold separately. New from Kenner Preschool. I hope you like Sports Billy. It's it's a weird cartoon. Um, it definitely has that filmation feel to it. Uh, I, I don't even know really how to talk about this one. It is just a weird cartoon. So, all right. Here we go. We're on the next one. The next one aired once. It was uh, a, a test. It's, this is the one and only pilot episode done. Um, some some markets got it part of the Marvel Action Hour. Uh, some places just got it as a special presentation of Fox Kids. Uh, it's, definitely, it's made by Marvel. And this is Solar Man. Uh, we got one issue of the Marvel comic, and we got one episode of the cartoon. Uh, somebody really thought this was going to be big, and they were wrong. So, I hope you guys enjoy. This is Solar Man, episode one, only one, the pilot. Enjoy. At last, the greatest power in the universe shall soon be mine. Let the countdown begin. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Launch photon ray. Begin energy extraction. My compliments, Dr. Shaham. You have served me well. Each sun I destroy, each planet I shatter, helps fill my power pods. I shall have power enough to conquer the universe. Commander, observe the monitor. We have located another target. It is known as the solar system. Set your course. The power of that sun must be mine. No, Commander. There is life on its third planet, the one known as Earth. 
If the sun is destroyed, the whole human race will perish. That is no concern of mine. I, I created the Energizer to help people, not destroy them. You created it at my command. It shall be used as I desire. Set hyperdrive control to maximum thrust. As the Warlord commands. Now bring me the circlet of power and pray that I forget you dared contradict me. For the sake of the universe, we must never let him possess the circlet of power. But what can we do? We must take it and flee. Only the circlet can defeat Gormaga Kral. Hurry, Altara. Every second counts. You go. I must stay behind to cover your escape. You know what that means? I know. But there is no other way. Godspeed, Sean. Commander, we have reached the target area. Yes, it's time at last. Back, Lieutenant Altara. Where is Shahan? He'll be here, Commander. He was delayed. Lifeboat 13, you are unauthorized for launch. Return to hangar. Return to hangar. Shahan's lifeboat. He dares to betray me. Starboard lasers, lock on target. Shahan's genius gave me my weapons, but he outlived his usefulness. Commander Kral, the laboratory has been ransacked. The circlet of power is gone. Then that's why he fled. He took it with him. You let him steal the greatest weapon of all, the one thing that can create a being strong enough to defy Gormaga Kral. For that, you shall gain my attack. Send a ship to retrieve the circlet. Fail, and all shall suffer my wrath. <laughs> then, after Space Ranger smashes into the saucer with his laser, I'll have him find the most beautiful alien in the galaxy. Let's see, should she be good? Or evil. Or maybe... Uh-oh. It's Dad. I didn't expect him home so early. 203. Glad to see you exercising instead of wasting time drawing those comics. Just keep it up and you'll make the team yet. Yeah, Dad. 204. 205. 206. Well, I'm going to hit the old sack. Got a seven-mile jog tomorrow morning. Good night, nine. Oh, boy. My arms will be sore for a week. If only I could explain that I don't want to be Mr. Macho Man. I wish Mom were alive. She'd understand. I just want to become a comic book artist. Boy, maybe someday Space Ranger will be right up with Spidey or Old Greenskin. A spaceship. A spaceship? Wowee. This I gotta see. Ben, is that you? Ben, where are you? It's disgraceful what's happening in this neighborhood. Now they even have panhandlers on the beach. Oh, please, can somebody help me? He might be in trouble, but why get involved? Oh, oh. Mister, what's wrong? You don't look so good. I'll get a doctor. It is no time. You must take this. I brought it from another galaxy. I pray you are worthy of it. The fate of the world is in your hands. You need help, fast. Uh, Dad, am I glad to see you. There's a man from another galaxy. He's hurt bad. You gotta come quick. He's... Huh? He's gone. Yeah, isn't that just like a spaceman? Never around when you need one. But, Dad, he was there! Look, he even gave me this bracelet! Ben, I always knew those comic books would get to you. 
First you're seeing invisible spacemen, then you start wearing a nutty bracelet. But Dad, I saw him! Sure you did. And I'll bet he was all green and gooky and had this great little flying sun. Our sensors have picked up a signal from Dr. Shahan's lifeboat. Commander Kral, Dr. Shahan is gone, and he has taken the circlet. Find it, find it, or face termination. I wonder what the big deal is about this bracelet. Maybe Dad's right. What if it's all a big con? Or some kind of practical joke? Hmm. The only thing that bugs me is, how come I can't get it off? Oh, well. What's that? Hey! We'll be back after this. Personally, I think commercials have some pretty cool stuff. What's happening? It's you! You're alive! Not quite, young Earthling. Are you a ghost? I am Dr. Shahan, but there is no time to talk of me. Your planet Earth is in the gravest danger. A giant battle cruiser is about to drain the energy from that fiery ball you call the sun. And when the sun dies, the Earth will die as well. Your planet will be devastated by tidal waves, giant earthquakes, and volcanic explosions on every continent. It will be the end of your world. You're putting me on. No one can do that to us. Gormaga Kral can with my invention. It is a giant photon energizer. I created it to help my people when our planet was dying. I foolishly believed that this was the intention of the warlord as well. But Gormaga Kral cares nothing about innocent lives. He lusts only for power and conquest. In order to stop him, I fled, taking the only weapon strong enough to defeat the evil warlord. Hey, great! That means you can save the Earth! No, young Earthling. It is too late for me. You must stop Gormaga Kral. Me? How can I fight some bloodthirsty clown from outer space? With the circlet of power. The bracelet I gave you at the pier. But why me? Because only you cared enough to help me. Only you showed compassion for a stranger. Only you are worthy to possess the awesome power of Solar Man. Solar Man? I can stay no longer. You must keep all I've told you a secret. Wait! What does the circlet do? How do I work it? When the sun strikes the circlet, you must press the symbol. Dr. Shahan, don't go! Ben? Ben? Come on, Rip Van Winkle. Time to rise and shine. I... I must have dreamt it all. I don't believe it. Benjamin Tucker already up and dressed for school? Planning to look for more bug-eyed monsters and green-skinned aliens? No way, Dad. I've had more than my share. It's about time. I was worried that spacey comic strip of yours was getting to you. See you later. Not as worried as I am. Hey, what's with you guys? We have come for the circlet of power. Then it wasn't a dream. When the sun strikes the circlet, you must press the symbol. What do I do? There's no sun. Now's my chance. Okay, Circlet. Do your thing. Hey, what? What's 
happening? Out of sight, I've become a, a hunk. Fantabulous. Whoa, I can even fly. Uh-oh, I almost forgot about them. They're fast, but Solar Man can outsmart them. No robot can outthink a brand new superhero, especially when he scrambles their gyroscopic circuits so they can't control their flight. Sorry, guys, that's the brakes. Uh-oh, if I don't change back to Ben, I'll be late for school. <laughs> I mean, he'll be late for school. Hey, this could lead to an identity crisis. Good, no one's looking. I'll hit the symbol like before. It worked! I've got the power to change myself. Like, like a teenage Hulk. Hi, Ben. Jenny. What are you doing with that pile of junk? Junk? These are actually two alien robots I've just defeated in Mortal Kombat. Well, then, if you ever get him fixed, send him to me. I'll put him to work cleaning my room. Don't worry, Benjamin. Weird is in. Sure, just ask Denise. But it's true. They flew after me and... Well, we gotta go now, Ben. Yeah, time to polish our spaceship. Boy, the best way to keep a secret is to tell everyone. Then nobody believes it. We must have circlet of power. You! Can't anything stop you? Only the circlet. I'm warning you guys, if I'm late for school! Hey, what's happening? Forget it! I don't want to know! Hail, leader of the robot droids. Who is this stripling? Why is he here? The story's true. You're Gormaga Kral, leader of the Robodroids. I need no feckless juvenile to tell me who I am. Commander, the, the circlet. circlet. We, we cannot, cannot remove, remove it from, from his arm. arm. At a time like this, do not bore me with petty problems. If you cannot remove the circlet from his arm, the answer is simple. Remove the arm. back after a short commercial announcement. Sheesh, stick around. Come on, you guys. Can't we talk this over? Stop where you are. Release the boy or I'll shoot. I warned you. They're only stunned. There's no time to lose. Follow me. Who are you? And why are you helping me? I'm... Quickly, we must get to the Energizer. They are sealing off all the exits. Let's go. Your friend's sharply rough. We're safe. We made it. Oh, go. It... It's up to you. Only you can stop Gormaga Kral. The circlet! 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 The Zingo! <laughs> I ought to be pitching for the Dodgers. Hey, you're the one who let the sunlight in. I can use every friend I can get. But when am I going to call you? Okay, Beepy, we've got a job to do. An enemy intruder. That means the boy is free. He has used the circlet of power. For that, he shall die. The Energizer. I found it. Gormaga Crawl. 
When I throw that switch, the sun will die, and with it, Earth. No! I got to shut it off! No one stops Kermaga Kral! Then call me no one! Bibi, what? The Energizer! Now the Earth is doomed! Never! It is time for you to feel my touch! Who dares distract me? Beep me! Forget the robot. Your time has come. You know something, Crow? You sound like a comic book villain. Perhaps. And I strike like one, too. There's no way out. Unless I can trick him. You're a loser, Crawl. You couldn't hurt a fly. It worked. I'm free. I've got to stop that ray before it reaches the sun. Power circlet, don't fail me now. I haven't enough solar power to stop it. Only one choice left. Hope I survive this. Yeah. I forgot something. Gosh. Now let's get out of here. You've merely won the first skirmish, Solar Man! The circlet of power will be mine! When you least expect it, Solar Man, when you are most Vulnerable, Gormaga Crow will be back. Come in. You've got company, Ben. Jenny's here to see you. <laughs> Benjamin Tucker, what are you doing with this little kid's toy? Hey, Jen, can't you tell a toy from the real thing? The real thing? Right. His name's Beepy, and he helps save the Earth from Gormaga Crawl. See? I'm drawing it up as a Space Ranger story from my comic strip. Honestly, Ben, the way you talk, someone would think you really believe all this stuff. Next, you'll be worrying about an invasion from outer space. No, Jenny, I think we're safe. At least for now. When you least expect it, Solar Man, Gormaga Kral will be back. We'll be back after these quick messages. Sheesh! I'm all packed. Where are we going? Back to the show? Next Saturday is Halloween, so to get in the spirit, treat yourself to a whole morning of fun on Fox's Spooktacular Saturday with Beetlejuice and the other Universal Studios classic monsters. And don't miss the sneak preview of X-Men, a special event, part of Fox's Spooktacular Saturday, all morning long, next Saturday here on Fox. Hey, Toonsters, exciting action comes your way every weekday morning at 6 with Captain N, followed by Far Out Adventures on Camp Candy. Then at 7, you never know what'll happen next with Uncle Scrooge around on DuckTales, only on Fox 49. Remember when Saturdays and Sundays were for cleaning the yard? Gather up these leaves. Catching up on homework. And doing the dishes. <laughs> then came the Nickelodeon Kids Only Weekend with great kid shows all weekend long. Hey, all you kids, now we're going to have some fun. It's party time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Party all 
Football Weekend with a Nickelodeon Kids Only Weekend. Every weekend. Only on Nickelodeon. Meet a boy. Here are a few words about Levi's jeans and cords. <laughs> Levi's. <laughs> Hey, I love going back. Found some old Marvel Age books. This is episode issue ten. This was uh, back when they were taking and uh, doing stuff with the Star Wars characters. This was the original EU. Well, one of the original EUs. Um, I liked a lot of this post Empire or post Return of the Jedi Star Wars stuff. I guess I'd have to. I love it. I bought it all. So, I, I finally could a whole run the original Marvel Star Wars. So, hope you guys liked Solar Man. Um, if you don't, that's it. You're done. You watched it. You watched the only episode. Uh, you know, it's funny because uh, Joe and I and a couple others were talking about when uh, they did the uh, Cartoon Network had the specialties. They had the cartoons that they would show once and like try to get people interested. Uh, they did a lot of that on uh, like Adult Swim and stuff like that. There's a lot of cartoons I had that I saw that Marvel that that Cartoon Network had one episode of. That's it. And you're like, whatever, done. You're not getting any more. So, and you hear my cat. All right. So that is all for this week. I hope you like the mix of cartoons this week. Uh, because some of these won't be back. Like uh, Solar Man will not be back. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do next week. I never know until probably Sunday. Before I, I start working on the show the day after. So Saturday drops. Sunday I start working on the next show. So, as always, every Monday morning at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time, Group Therapy TV. A lot of cool, lot of cool interviews coming up, and a lot of them uh, on the calendar. Uh, every Sci Friday, 8 a 8 p.m. Oh, I say 8 a.m. because that's that's when we're watching this right now. 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Sci Fridays. 8 a.m. every Saturday morning, Saturday morning serials. Uh, you can find me at some shows upcoming. You can find me in August at the Jim and Dan Comic Book Show. Uh, you can find me at the uh, Haunted Screams Expo, September 17th and 18th in Hampton Beach, Virginia. The Return of PickleCon in November. So, you know, I'm going to get a little deep on you here, people. I'm sorry. But, somebody asked me the other day, you know, why do I do this? It's because I do it for fun. I do it to bring cartoons that people forgot existed. Sometimes I forgot they exist until I find them. Uh, and I do it because, man, sometimes you just need it. Um, take take an hour out of your day, watch a cartoon, be a kid for five minutes. Um, there's a lot of bull crap out there, and if you can forget it for five, you forget it for an episode of a cartoon. Take you back to a simpler time. Enjoy it, man. You know, just because you grow older doesn't mean you have to grow up. And there's always time for cartoons. There's always time for comics. There's always time to sit down with your kids, maybe play a video game, color in a coloring book, whatever. Just have fun and enjoy yourself. That's that's my, my piece of advice to everybody. Enjoy yourself. Because, you know, work ain't going to. <laughs> So, I will talk to you guys next week. Have fun, and I will see you later.